Welcome everyone to an APH virtual Excel camp. This week is upper elementary and we are serious about science doing animal adaptations. We are so glad to have you join us today. Feel free to write in the chat who you are and where you're from and I will get to introducing you to our instructors. Today we have Cheryl Hannon, a professor from California State LA. Hi Cheryl. Uh, we can't hear Cheryl right now. She's busy working on something, but she'll be with you in a second. We have Jonna Bogue. She is a lower school science teacher at the Pegasus School in California. Hi, Jonna. Hi. Welcome, friends. Nice to see you again. And we have Parissa Lamara, teacher of the visually impaired at Whittier Unified School District in California. Hi, Parissa. Hi, everyone. And Susan Drake, our student intern from Missouri State University. Hi, Susan. Hello, everyone. Glad to be with you today. Now, we had people who sent us photos and gave us permission. We also need permission to see those. Lily sent us a picture of her eyeball that she made. Looks like it's kind of sticking on the end of a stick. It's round and has a black pupil, and it looks like a red. Um, oh, help me. What is that red instead of blue or Iris. brown? Iris, oh, thank Iris. you, see? I can't think off the top of my head sometimes. And Nadia, Nadia sent us a picture of her teeth. So it almost looks like a flat piece of pink or red paper, almost like your gums. And then sticking out of it straight up, looks like three possibly um, paper towel tubes cut down and cut kind of spiky on the top. And she has a bright blue tape kind of holding them down onto the pink paper. And Shane showing us pictures of his eye and his teeth. He has a round flat piece of paper with eyes and a nose drawn on it and he has two large, looks like fangs, sticking out of the face to the left and the right down from the eyes and nose. And then his eyeball looks sort of like clay or possibly Play-Doh, bright yellow for the entire ball of the eye, green small circle for the pupil, and then a little tiny black dot. No, iris. See, here's my words again. Green for the iris, black for the pupil. I will get my terms correct. And we had somebody who has actually done the experiment in the extension activity that was sent. Kenji decided to dip his hand into a Ziploc bag full of Crisco or shortening some type of fat content. And then he took that bag and dumped it into a bowl full of ice water and tried to, to make a determination of what he felt. He did give us a hypothesis, but because some of you might not have done that extension activity yet, later on I'm only going to share that hypothesis with our instructors. So you are welcome to continue to send us photos. Our next camp isn't in for a couple weeks, but I will hold on to those and I will share those at camp the next time we get together. So now I'm going to stop sharing and I'm gonna say, uh, Cheryl, are you ready to take it over? Well, I am. Okay, go ahead, Jonna. <laughs> so let's friends, remember yesterday we were and Jonna, you are cutting oh. in and out. All of a sudden, the internet vinegar. has gone down. I will be back. <laughs> uh, hold on. I think it finally got a little bit better. Can you hear me OK? Now I can hear you. OK. I may have to come and sign back in. We'll see. So friends, we did an egg experiment yesterday and we put vinegar in a glass and we also put water in a glass and we added eggshells to the vinegar as well to the water. So I would like, and I was hoping you can tell me today what you have noticed in one day. Now remember, this will take five days to have great results, but let's start with 
tell me in the text box, what have you noticed about your eggs, or I should say eggshells? We also have a hand raised if you want to take some people to tell you. Okay, Princess Eleanor. I see the vinegar. Okay. Princess, what happened to your egg? My egg, uh, kind of was rubbery inside, and uh, the water wasn't doing anything, but the egg is breaking in the water. In the vinegar. I mean, in the vinegar. Also, we use brown eggs, and the brown coating is coming off. Ooh, brown the eggs. Mm. Yeah, so the coating, she couldn't see that, but she could kind of feel it, but the brown coating was coming off the eggshell. Some of the coating, all on the, the vinegar. coating go off, but. Right, not all, it, but that's what, it's, and it was bubbling. She felt the bubbles. Okay, thank you. You want one more person? I'm Araya. Hello. We can hear you. Um, so my vinegar egg got a lot of bubbles in the vinegar and all over the egg and around it, and it got flat and super soft. And then in my water, it didn't do anything. Very cool. And one more. Raritan? Uh, we can hear you. The gratin. Um, my egg well, I used brown egg and like it got flat, really squishy and soft, and um, the brown is starting to peel off. So squishy and soft, and the brown is starting to peel off. Brown okay. Also, um, um, get dissolving. Neat. Thank you. Okay, back to you, Jonna. Sorry about that, friends. It's always fun with the internet, isn't it? <laughs> so they was, those were wonderful, wonderful results, and I loved hearing you, you describe the eggshells perfectly. So I wanted to show you as well, like I wanted to mention the vinegar, remember, that is going to represent what? Acid. And think about juices, they're acidic. Or if you're having something like gummy sour, the gummy sour candies, that's acidic. So remember, it's not very good for your teeth. So let's see what happens as the days go by. So now I would love you to also check out, we sent an extension activity today, and there is an excellent blubber lab. So please take a look at that. But now we're going to pass it on to Susie, who is going to discuss the ear. Hello guys, it is Susie. And we're gonna start talking about the ear today. This week, we've talked all about the eye and all about your teeth. And today it is all about the ears. And my job is to tell you kind of all of the different parts of the ear and then we're going to go into some different animals and their animal adaptations with the ears. But first, I'm going to sing you a song to introduce you to the different parts of the ear. But you can't make fun of my singing. Do you promise? Tell me yes in the chat if you promise. Because I'm not a very good singer, okay? Oh, Lila, thank you so much for saying yes. I appreciate it. Okay, here goes. First, the pinna on our head, they collect the sound waves. The pinna funnel the waves to the ear canal, and they make the eardrum vibrate like a big bass drum. Sound waves move to the tiny bones of the ear and then to the cochlea. The hair cell detects the sound, then moves the sound across the auditory nerve to our brain. Okay, guys, that was a lot of parts, and I hope. I hope that you can remember them all because you're going to need to know them as we talk about our animals, okay? But before we talk about that, did you know that 
if we put things up to our ear, we can change sound with them. Like if I put a toilet paper roll up to my ear, it changed the way sound comes into my ear. Or like if I put a washcloth up to my ear, it might make the sound quieter. So as we talk about, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, you can laugh, Isaiah, you can laugh. <laughs> but as we talk about these animals today, they're going to have some adaptations maybe to the parts of their ear that I sing about or to the outside of the ear that work like um, a roll of toilet paper or a washcloth to change the way the sound comes in and out. So I want you guys to really pay attention. And at the end, we might ask you some questions about how the sound waves come in and out or how the animals have made adaptations to their ears, okay? So you be ready and you be ready to tell me about your favorite animals and how they have adapted their hearing and their ears, okay? So Parissa, are you up next? Oh, Isaiah, you're funny. You're all ears. You're my kind of guy. Jokes all the way. I'm actually up next. Thank you. So could I please see the slideshow that we prepared, Cheryl? Of course. Let me cue it up. All right, are we good? Okay. You are still in, um, you're not in the presentation mode yet. Oh, okay. I don't, now is it presenting? Nope. Okay. Forgive me just a second. That's okay. We all have those issues with technology because we're all human. Guys, why don't you tell me in the chat what animals you think we're going to talk about today? Just shoot me some guesses in the chat as fast as you can. Let's have another lightning round. Ooh, a spider. What else? Well, this week we've talked about a mantis shrimp. Ooh, we talked about a bat. Do you think we're going to talk about one again? Dogs, maybe? You know, I have some dogs and they have some excellent hearing. A tarantula, a bunny. Great, those are all great guesses. We might talk about them today. We will have to find out. I can't wait to see whales. You know, I'm not sure. I don't know if we're gonna talk about the same ones again or if we're gonna talk about new ones. I think that my fellow teachers are so creative, they're not gonna have any repeats. I bet they came up with some really interesting animals with some really interesting ears. All right, how are we doing? Do you see the presentation? Yep, I'm ready to go. That's worms. All right, Jonna, you take it away. Thank you. So hearing is a sense we use every day as humans, as you know. We use it to avoid danger. We talk to loved ones and communicate. But sound is made of vibrations or sound waves that we can hear. These sound waves are formed by objects that vibrate or shake back and forth. And sound waves, even though we don't see them, they travel through the air, through water, and solid objects as vibrations. When they reach our ears, these waves enter into our eardrums and vibrate. So the one thing, as you can see right here, I have a picture. It's infrasound, it says ultrasound, as you can see there. And we're going to talk about that. Do you see where it says HZ? That stands for Hertz. Hertz is the term used to measure the length of sound waves. I have the picture there, as you, as you can see, it says, and if you can, it says 20 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz. And there are humans below that picture. That's what we hear. If you look at the elephant, it says they hear below 20 Hertz. And that means we, that an elephant could hear things that we can't. Just like if you have a dog, they can't always hear the same sounds that we can. They can hear sounds that we don't even hear. So it's very important to understand Hertz. And I'm gonna mention that 
a couple of times. So next slide, please. So here is an example of sound waves and what they look like. Sound waves are like waves in an ocean. They have peaks and they have valleys that go down low. The farther apart these peaks and valleys are, the lower the Hertz value is. The closer they are, the higher the Hertz value is. Some waves are so close together, like the first picture. So when the value gets over 1,000, they talk about kilohertz. We're not going to talk about kilohertz today. But from the pictures, the first example, I show you waves that are close together. So that means when it's high pitched, that's how that sound wave looks. The second picture I have has the wave spread out, which is a low sound and a lower hertz. Next slide, please. So can you guess, friends, which animal this is? I will give you some hints and I would like you to text it in. They are often eaten by other animals. And some of them don't even have mouths. Can hmm. you describe for me the picture you see on the, the screen? The picture looks like a almost like an insect. There's big black eyes and it's brown and fuzzy and it's really a close-up picture so it's hard. It could be anything. It just looks very, very, I see, ooh, I see a moth. Creepy. I see a lot of moths. A fly guy, a bumblebee. Well, I keep hearing moths and you are exactly right. Can we go to the next slide? A moth uh, this is really interesting. I didn't even know that. There are certain moths that don't even have mouths. And what they do is they eat when they're a caterpillar and they store it in their body. So that's what they rely on for the rest of time. A lot of moths don't even live that long. So moths have the best hearing in the world. I think that is really, really odd because I didn't realize that they have the best hearing. So moths have the ability to hear a higher frequency than bats. And guess what bats do? They like moths. So luckily they can hear better than bats and they're able to fly away. And they also have a great sense of smell. Now passing it over to Parissa. Hi everyone. Okay, so I have a question for you and I want you to type in the chat window what you think the answer is. Do you think an animal can hear if it does not have ears? Yes or no? Can an animal hear if it does not have ears? We've got some yeses. Princess Eleanor says no. Yes, yes. Simon says yes. Yes, okay. So the majority of you seem to say yes. Someone said no yes, so they're not sure. Let's find out. We lost our slideshow. So we're gonna just wait one second. And then for those of you who said yes, you are absolutely correct. There is an animal that we're gonna watch a short video about and you guys get to learn about the smallest frog in the world. Smallest frog. All right. Thumbs up if you're seeing. I can see the, the, the video. Eating with your mouth, tasting with, with your feet, seeing with your ears. Are they doing it wrong? Nope. Just science, bro. Animals, Trace here, smelling out the facts for D News. This week it was announced that this little frog. Cheryl, the video sound isn't working appropriately. Most have three sections the outer, the middle. You can just stop it and I'll explain it if you just go on to the next slide. 
You know what? It's because I muted. Do you want me to play it? I, I certainly can play it again. Um, I muted, but if I... It's okay. You can just go on to the next slide and I'll explain about this little guy. He's, he's worth talking about. Thank you, though. So while we were waiting to get back to the slideshow, let me tell you guys about this tiny frog. I want everyone out there to find your pinky finger. Israel says he loves frogs, me too. I want you to find your pinky finger and I want you to find your pinky nail. So feel your smallest nail on your hand. Now, I want you to imagine that there's a tiny frog the size of that nail sitting on your nail right now. And that's about how big this frog is. It is actually the smallest frog in the entire world. Now, a couple of days ago, we learned about the bumblebee bat. The bumblebee bat was the smallest bat in the world. It was the size of a jelly bean and it weighed as much as a penny. Well, this frog is actually even smaller than that. And guess what? It is millions of years old. Now, Mina, what would you call that? Something that, that, that's that old? A really, really, really old frog. A really, really, really old frog, yes. They live in the highest altitude rainforest. A super boomer. A super boomer, Mina says. The frog is a super boomer, okay. So they live in the rainforests, they're really old, and they do not have ears, but yet somehow they manage to croak and they can hear. How would they do that? Well, scientists x-rayed their heads and found out that they have an inner ear inside their heads. And guess what? They hear with their mouth. So they open their mouth and sound comes in and they're able to hear with their mouth instead of with any ears. And that's what makes these frogs especially amazing. Thank you, Cheryl. Back to you, Jonna. Okay, for the next slide. Sorry, you guys. I'm not exactly seeing what you're seeing. And so is the slideshow not showing right now? I have a slide with an elephant ear that says which uh, yeah. I, I don't, I don't see the elephant. Right now what we're seeing is the presentation uh, slide as if you were getting ready to build it. And we are seeing okay. the world's smallest frog with two little pictures. There you okay. go. There's the elephant. And, and let me, um, I'm trying, I'm not exactly sure why it's not showing in presentation mode. Let me try and share my screen a different way and see if this works. Well, in the meanwhile, I don't mind talking about the elephant. So with the elephant, you, it uses their hearing and most importantly, they have their ears for many important reasons, as well as having brilliant hearing. Remember, we have 20 to 20,000 hertz where we could hear. They could hear 16 to 12 hertz. So like I said, they could hear things that we can't hear. So they can pay attention to predators that are going to attack them and can communicate over long distances. They can detect their airborne calls, which are noises they make that they can proje project through the air. And they recognize who is making them from a mile away. So an elephant will use its ears to help them keep cool in the hot climates where they live the large surface area and thinness of their ears also keep them cool. So notice how large their ears are. The large flap of skin or cartilage is called a pina. And passing it now to Parissa. Thank you, Jonna. Okay, our next slide is going to show and um, Okay, so our next, now we see an elephant. It's a picture of a big giant elephant with huge tusks, which we learned yesterday means that the elephant is very old because elephant tusks never stop growing. Now, Cheryl, we need to go on to the next slide, please. Thank you. All right, guys, I want you to put on your thinking caps and I want you to type in the chat window what you think this is. All right, ready? What animal has 
three hearts can camouflage with its surroundings, meaning it can blend or change its body color to almost become invisible, is venomous, meaning it's poisonous, and is highly aggressive, meaning that you probably shouldn't mess with it because it will stick up for itself. All right, so someone said, Kenji said octopus. We've got a squid, octopus, octopus, a garden snake from Nadia, octopus, a lizard from Princess Eleanor. Andrew says octopus, a snake. Okay, for those of you who are guessing octopus, you are so very close. Cheryl, if we could go on to the next slide, please. Thank you. So it's not actually an octopus, but you guys were close. It's its cousin. Its cousin is a cuttlefish. Okay, so it's the cousin to the squid and the octopus. It's a cephalopod, which I think may be the funnest word I have ever said. Cephalopod, Mina, can you say cephalopod? Cephalopod, cephalopod all right. It's, you should feel accomplished. So this is the cousin to the octopus, also the cousin to the squid, and it is almost as old as that first tiny frog we learned about. It's 21 million years old, so it's been around for a long, long time. It's a super boomer, as Mina would say. Yeah. It's got the ability to shoot ink. So say you're a cuttlefish and you're in the ocean and you're just minding your own business and you're swimming along, and all of a sudden you feel a shark over you. Donna, 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 what are you gonna do? So one of the things that the cuttlefish can do is it can shoot ink. So it shoots an ink cloud into the ocean. And when the shark's going, wow, what's that weird black stuff in the ocean? Hmm. While the shark is confused and distracted, the cuttlefish can swim away really quickly and hopefully get away. So that's one of its defense mechanisms. It also is deaf, but it can still feel the difference in the water pressure if there's a shark or something predatory nearby. And one of the coolest things about it is that it's the master of disguise. So that means it can camouflage itself. So for those of you who don't know what that means, it's got millions of cells, pigment cells on its body, and in a second, it can change its color to match whatever it's up against. So if it's up against a big blue piece of coral, it can become that same exact blue. If it's up against something multicolored, it can become that exact same color. And it does it in an instant. So it almost looks like it disappeared, which I think would be a pretty cool superpower to have. Okay, so here's the weirdest thing about that. Even though it can change its color in a second to any color that it's next to, it can't see color. It's colorblind. Does anybody have any ideas as to how that's possible? How can something that can't see color change its body to be any color? Does anybody have any guesses? A fish is a fish. This is true. A fish is a fish. I'm going to give you guys a minute. Okay, someone says, nope. There's a question mark. I know, I wasn't too sure either. I had to do some research. Blow stuff from Princess Eleanor. Princess Eleanor, I like the way you think because it's a different animal. Audrey says, no. Okay, well, let me tell you guys. So, the cuttlefish has special pupils. The human pupil is a circle, and it gets bigger and smaller depending on how much light we need to come in. The cuttlefish's pupils are actually W-shaped. So, a W in print, not a W in braille, all right? So, a W in print is like a line that shoots down at a diagonal, then back up at a diagonal, then back down at a diagonal, then back up at a diagonal. So that's the shape of this creature's pupils. And because of that, it can see light in a way that human beings cannot. And it can see color in a way that we cannot. Next slide, please. Oh, let me tell you two things about this slide. So on the last slide, there was actually pictures of a cuttlefish that I failed to describe. But in one picture, you can see the cuttlefish. It's got two big giant eyes on either side of its head. Kind of looks like a squid. It has two tentacles and eight arms. And typically they're about brown colors. Um, so on this slide, we can see a side-by-side -side image of a shrimp the way the human eye sees it. And the same shrimp in the same picture 
the way the cuttlefish eyes see it. And the way that we see it as humans, it has a black background, it's on a brown rock or a piece of coral, and it's just like a muted dull green. Now on the right, the image is very, very vibrant. It's full of fluorescent colors and it's beautiful. And what we see as black, they see as almost like a vibrant pinkish purple with teal. And that muted shrimp on the left is a bright green fluorescent with yellow specks on the right. So even though they're considered colorblind, cuttlefish can see color in a much prettier way than we can. Back to you, Jonna. All right, so now I'm going to describe this picture. We can see two medium ears and they also have a wet nose, which helps them absorb scent chemicals. This is surprising. A lot of you like to have them as a pet, but did you know they have three eyelids? Ooh, I see bark, bark, dog, dog, dog. I see a lot of dog and you are correct. It is a dog. Can you please go to the next slide? So I thought this was a lot of fun. Now I'm showing you a picture of a greyhound, which is a very large, very large dog. And I have a picture of a cheetah. So when you're looking at the two, why do you think I'm showing those two pictures? Which one do you think can outrun the other? Do you think a greyhound is faster? Or do you think the cheetah would win? Tell me in your chat box what you think. I see cheetah. Hmm, greyhounds. I see a lot of cheetahs. Well, greyhound. Oh, a lot of cheetahs. I don't know. It sounds like there are mixed results. Friends, a greyhound dog could beat a cheetah in a long distance race. Yes, that is right. They would actually beat the cheetah. So they are excellent long distance runners. So in the beginning, the cheetah would be very, very fast, but the greyhound in the end would outrun for sure the cheetah. They, where the cheetah is incredibly fast, it can only keep its speed for about 200 to 300 yards, which is not that long. So also what is interesting, if you have a dog or you ever know of someone's dog, they can actually hear that you are home before you open that door. So actually a dog's hearing is highly sensitive and they can hear fre frequencies above what a human can hear. I just had something happen recently. My fire alarm went off in the house and my dog got so scared because that sound is so intense for his ears compared to ours. There's even sounds that they can hear that we can't. That's why if you have lightning that goes off, a lot of dogs get really, really scared. So let's go to the next slide. What am I? Well, let's see, I have this Hmm, I'm trying to explain what this looks like. It looks like it's a little bit wet and there's a big eye, it's gray. There's blue in the background. I see shark. Hmm, they eat fish and squid and crustaceans and they are very highly intelligent. In fact, ooh, I see some great answers. I see a dolphin, I see a whale, I see a whale. Let's see, a lot of whales, a fish, you are on the right track, my friends. It is a dolphin. And dolphins have exceptional hearing as well as eyesight. And they also use echolocation to hear when they are going to hear something similar to bats. A dolphin will emit a sound, a squeak in this case, that will bounce off surfaces and back to the dolphin's lower jaw. That's how they hear. The bounce back of sound vibrations gives a sound map so they know when they want to eat or when to avoid danger. Do you see that little, let's go to the next slide, please. So you can see right here, what I'm showing is I'm circling under the eye, there's this little pinhole and that's be below the dolphin's eye and that's its ear. Why doesn't a dolphin have an external ear flap? Do you remember the elephant? They had big pinnas, they were huge. That means the flap, the outside layer of the ear. Well, you can see here, they have very small pinnas. Very, very tiny. It almost looks like they don't have, a, have an ear. Some believe that the reason why they were made to be so small is they can swim more efficiently and swim easily. Because think of a dolphin with big ears like an elephant. 
they would get in the way, wouldn't they, in the water? So it's small, but it gets the job done. Their hearing range for the bottle, bottlenose dolphin is between 75 to 150,000 hertz, much greater than a human. And now let's go to Parissa. Thank you, Jonna. Okay, so I am marveling over all the animals that we've learned about. And now, Jonna, you made me think about my dogs and the fireworks and how they always get so bothered when there's fireworks. And now I understand why. So our next animal, we're going to listen to the sound that it makes. And you guys are going to type in the chat window what you think it is. Now, this one, I think, is kind of clear. So let's listen to it and see if we can't figure out what it is. Can you guys give me a thumbs up if you're yeah. hearing it? Thank you. I see dolphin, whale, cat. Let's keep listening. A human, a whale whale. Matthew says a cougar. Isaiah says a cat. Shark, whale, jungle cat of some sort. Okay. Snake. Who said snake? Oh, Audrey said snake. And Fatima said whale. All right, Cheryl, next slide, please. Some of you were correct. It is a little, it can, it can be a little scary, I agree. Okay, for those of you who said snake, you were right. That was actually snake sounds. I found a YouTube video that will play you snake sounds for an entire hour. So if you guys are ever bored, you can go on YouTube and look up snake sounds for an hour. Okay, so on this slide, we have three images and I'm gonna describe two of them first and I'll go into the third in a minute. So the top slide, is, the top photo is a picture of a rattlesnake head. And you can see that its mouth is open and it's got those two big fangs that we learned about that come down and they look huge, okay? On the bottom picture, we have a yellow snake and it's kind of coiled up together and it's bright, bright yellow and it's against the black background. So now answer me this. In the window, tell me why for yes and, and for no. Do you guys think that snakes have ears? Do snakes have ears? Yes or no? No, Anna says, Isaiah says no. There's a lot of no's. And let's see, no, 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 no. Okay, well, you're all kind of right, actually. No, they don't have external ears, but they do have internal ears that are actually connected to their jaw. So they can hear vibrations as they're slithering along on the ground. The noise will come in and they can hear it with the vibrations and the device, the mechanism inside of their heads that are attached to their jaw. So they're kind of like that first frog we learned about where they kind of hear through their mouth. So they can hear vibrations and they can hear at such a low pitch, but fortunately the human voice falls within their range. So pet owners, snake owners swear that their pet snakes will actually respond to their names. And you know what? They're probably right because snakes can hear our voices. Now the last cool thing the snake, well, the ears, someone's asking a question. So the ears are on the snake's mouth. There, there's, yes, they're inside the snake's head and they're connected to the snake's jaw. So it can, it can hear the vibrations. Now, they also have infrared vision. So they've got a set of eyes that we can see on their heads. And with those eyes, they can see a little bit. They don't have great vision, but they can see some color and some shapes. But they also have something called pit organ. And these are little holes that they have on their heads. And with those, they can see infrared, which means that they can see the heat, the body heat that something gives off. So the, the middle image on this slide is of a mouth, but it's of the way that the snake would see the mouth. So you and I may see it as a little white or gray or brown fuzzy creature. In this image, the background is a blue and the little mouse is actually like a yellowish green, but very, very bright. And its face is almost red. And that's the body heat that it's giving off. So at night, snakes use this vision to be able to find animals to eat. And if they were close to you, they could see your body heat even through a door. Okay, 
Donna, back to you. Next slide, please. So what you're looking at now, I'm asking you what animal am I? And it looks like there's a lot of fur, or I would say feathers around an eye. The eye is very bright red and black, and there's a little bit of white around the eye. They are very extremely intelligent animals, and they have excellent navigational abilities, which means they know where they're going better than a GPS. I see a lot of birds. I see a couple birds. Oops, birds, eagle. I think you're on the right track, my friends. Let's go to the next slide. And we are talking about a pigeon. A pigeon can hear sounds that are way, they're much lower than a human can hear. The average pigeon is able to hear sounds so low that we cannot hear them at all. They can detect distant storms, earthquakes, and even volcanoes. Who would have known a pigeon can do that? With their exceptional hearing ability and their navigational skills, they are named the best navigators in the world. So I wish maybe I should have a pigeon in my car instead of a GPS. Let's go back to Cheryl. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you so much, Donna and Carissa, for sharing about those super cool animals and their super cool hearing. So now I have two questions for you, and we'll let you rate some of you. You already have your hands up. I love it. You're with me. And you can type in the chat window your responses, or you can raise your hand. Are you ready for the first question? Here's the first question. Of all the animals we heard about today, the frog, the cuttlefish, the snake, is there an animal that you can relate to, that your hearing is similar to any of the animals that we heard about? Look at all the hands that I have raised. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have eight hands raised. How about if we take four? Because we do have another question. And if you don't get called on this time, you can always write it in the chat window. Okay. So Shay is first, which I think is Lila. What? Um. So Lila. I think the dolphin is. Uh, I think I think the dolphin is the one that's related to my hearing. Yo, we hear you. So the I dolphin. Hear really well. They do hear really well. Is there something else that may be similar to how you use your hearing that a dolphin does? Um, well, I don't have tiny ears, but uh, um, even though the dolphin has tiny ears, they can hear, and I always have hair coming in my ears because I have long hair. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing, Lila. Let's hear from Jax. Whoops, hold on. People moved around on me. There you go. Oh, I think we ended up with George first, just with the way I clicked. Okay. Sorry about that. George? There you go. Oh. George, try pressing your space bar and holding it down while you talk. Okay, we're going to stop for now, George. Maybe we'll try again later. Let's try Jax. There you go. What was the question? Who do you relate to? Is there an animal that we talked about today that has hearing like you? Well, I had ear infection, so probably an elephant. Thank you. Sounds good. Okay, well, sounds bad actually, but hopefully those will get taken care of. Okay. How about Sydney? A dolphin. 
dolphin. And why the dolphin? Because it can hear really well. I can too. Anyway. There you go. Nice job. Thank you. And let's take one last comment for this question. Okay. Rutwick? I think I said that right. Rutwick? Try holding. There you go. Yes. I would like to be like a dolphin because dolphins hear good and I hear them. Very cool. Love your answers, everyone. We also had a few people who shared in the chat window. George says a dolphin. And um, Kenji says a dog because he has great hearings. Sim Simeon says my ears are like an elephant. I can hear far away. And my uh, eyes are not that good, but I hear very well. Kenji says hearing. And Audrey says yeah, like dodos. And we do have one last one here. A pigeon. Israel says his hearing is like a, a pigeon. And Matthew says a dolphin because he can hear very well. Thank you, everyone, for sharing. Okay, here's my second question, number two. If you could choose animal ears, this is a two-part question, what animal ears would you choose and why? What animal ears would you choose and why? And I see lots of hands are being raised. Let's start with Rose. I would choose an, a whale ear because um, I think whales, uh, or I mean dolphin ears, sorry, because I think dolphins hear really well. Okay, very cool. Fatima or Fatima? Try holding your space bar down. So, there you go. What, which animal and why? A dog because I ha be because the dog has good hearing. The dog because it's got good hearing. Very cool. Isaiah. Um, I would be a dog so, so I can hear well. A dog so you could hear well. Fantastic. Let's have one last comment. Amariah? I would do a dog because they have cute ears and they can hear some things that human can't. In the chat window, we had a lot of people say they would like to have dog ears to hear better. One person said they would like elephant ears. You want to know what I think would be super cool about elephant ears? I'm going to hold up a piece of paper up against my ear. They have huge pinnae that give it a nice big funnel. And you know what else? It is so huge, they can fan themselves with their ears to cool themselves down. Wouldn't that be the coolest thing in this hot weather that we've been having in July and August as we, we come into the, the warmest part of our season? I would like some ears that I could flap and fan myself too. Oh, well, thank you so much, Donna and Parissa for sharing all about our ears and friends at home. Thank you so much for sharing your ideas too. Now here's our last task for you to do in this week's lesson about animal adaptations. We've talked about your eyes, your teeth, and now your ears. When you get a chance to do Blubber Lab today, we'll even talk about some of the physical adaptations that animals have in their bodies to help them cope with really cold weather. So what your task now is to decide on if you could pull from all of the animal features we've talked about and create your very own animal superpower, what would you choose for eyes, for teeth, for ears, and maybe some adaptations for your body, including fur and maybe just 
really rough, tough skin, what would you choose? And we have our friends at home here, Nina and Amaya, who have created their animals using all of the features that they have already chosen and that they've created and shared with you this week. So let's have them share about their animals that they created. You want to talk about Fuzzy? Hi, this is the animal I made and his name is Fuzzy. He has a narwhal tooth and koala ears. Now why did you choose koala ears? Because they never get hot or cold. They're always the right temperature. Yep, they lose their heat through their ears to cool them down. And they also have a lot of fur on them to keep them warm. Okay, how about their eyes? And I chose cat eyes because they can see in the dark. And also because I think it's cool that they can only see in two page of um, two colors that are purple and blue. All right, thank you. And Mina, I think you have an animal to share about also. So I don't have my animal right now. I made a video about it though. But I do have an ear I made. And um, I made this at a pet center too because we have a huge back of them. And it's triangular shaped. And I made it that way because it can hear things that are further in the distance if it's, hot, if it's long and sticks out of the top of the head. Um, and it's got lots of little strings and little fibers on top. That way it can hear different vibrations and sound waves. Like a dog. Kind of, yeah. Kind of looks like our dog's ear. Or like a cat ear, mm -hmm. it's got like a long pointy ear. Yeah. Or uh, like a fat bunny ear. Thank you. Love and it. Turquoise and purple. Okay. Did you today? Is Brennan here? What was the question? Do you have Brennan today? He is here. Brennan, get up. He's hiding in the corner. All right, let's hear about your super animal that you created. I did an ad. Uh, uh, pointy ears here. You can talk out loud. I have pointy ears here. You can see. You have pointy ears. Yeah, like Mina's, but they're like taller and pointy like my dog's ears. Describe it. So they're tall and pointy like who? My dog's ears. Like uh, dog's ears, cool. Yeah. And uh, they are uh, good for hearing stuff. They're they're good for hearing stuff. Okay. And did you have two ears, or did you make more than two? Oh, uh, yeah, two. Two, two ears. Are there any animals with like five ears? I wonder. No. I five ears. I don't know. Five ears. You could put one like around your head, and you can hear from all different angles all at the same time. As you can see. But how many earrings? <laughs> And, and like then you could have lots of earrings. Yes, that, that could be agreeable. <laughs> we, we could do that. Okay, I took over. You're back. <laughs> I like Cheryl's idea of having elephant ears, although I would be pretty funny looking. That would be fun. You just have like ears hanging. Yes, low ears. Like Dumbo. All right, thank you. All right, friends at home. So your job now is to put together an animal with eyes, teeth. You can add a nose, you can choose your ears, and whatever body that you would like to have. And we would love to see the pictures of the animal superheroes that you created. Our last extension activity that is going to be shared with you tomorrow morning, or if you would like to fast forward in the blog with the Blubber Labs extension today, you can actually get a sneak preview of it. And our extension activity tomorrow is to create your animal superpower. So if you wanna fast forward and check that out, please go and check that out. There are five extension activities all together. The first one talked about physical and behavioral adaptations. So by choosing the features of eyes, teeth, and ears, are we choosing a behavioral or a physical adaptation when we create our animals? All right, let me see you type in the chat room, physical or behavioral. Here's the question again. If we choose eyes to have certain features, teeth to have certain features, and ears to have certain features, are we creating physical or behavioral adaptations? Those, again, type physical or behavioral in the chat window. Okay, 
If you typed physical, you are correct. We are choosing physical adaptations, eyes, teeth, and ears. How these animals use them, however, could be behavioral. For example, if I choose elephant ears and then I use my ears to fan myself, fanning myself, it could be a behavioral adaptation, right? But the physical ear itself um, is the physical adaptation that their ears have been created and evolved over time to be a certain shape to allow for that to happen. All right, nice job, friends at home, for those of you who answered physical. So do go back and see extension activity one for behavioral and physical adaptations. Extension activity two, about your eyes and creating a candy eyeball. Extension activity three, is talking about different physical adaptations to bodies to be able to deal with very cold weather. We call that one our blubber lab. And then we also have an interview where you can learn about your own eyes and how you see and your functional vision. That's the third extension activity. The fourth one is the blubber lab. And the fifth one is creating your own super animal that you could choose your own uh, physical adaptations for. So friends, one other thing I wanted to mention about each of the extension activities, there are videos embedded throughout. So if you know how to pull up your links, you can pull up your links and you will see a little hint that says, watch this video now or click here to be able to access those links and get to those videos. We have Brennan and Mina featured in one where they have created their super animal heroes. Mina is featured in the candy eyeball and in the measuring video. We have Jana featured in animal adaptations and blubber lab. And there's a little short bio of each of us that we would love for you to check out. This particular series was inspired by a set of books. This is a book from Scholastic. It's called, What If You Had Animal Eyes? And there's a whole set of them. We used, what if you had animal eyes? What if you had animal ears? And there's a picture of a girl with really fuzzy ears and a koala bear next to her because she wishes she had koala bear ears. What if you had animal teeth? And this features a young man who has chosen fangs of a snake for his teeth. And there's a picture of a rattlesnake next to him. So it compares the teeth that he created with the rattlesnake teeth. And we would also invite you to enter into a contest we're gonna have. So let me tell you about our contest. We really are excited about the animal features that you're creating and the animals like fuzzy that you're gonna create at home. So are you listening? Put yes in the chat window if you're listening. And let me tell you about our contest. We would like you to create your own animal superhero and send us a picture. And we are going to choose one of our animals that has the best eyes, another one that has the best ears, and the last one that has the best teeth. And if you are the winner of our contest, we are going to send you one of these animal books of your very own. Um, so yes, pictures can be sent to Leanne Grillot, L. G-R-I-L-L-O-T. And when do they have to get them to me by? What is a date? We need a due date. So okay. would you say the 31st of July? That sounds great. The 31st of July, that gives us enough time to judge them and announce our prizes because we will be with you again in week two. Okay. So when is week two? Does anyone know? This is Susie. And I would love to talk to you about week two, which is August 17th. And we will be talking to you about engineering and crazy natural events. We can't wait to see you for week two. But we want to remind you about the things that we've talked about today and this week. About animal adaptations, about physical adaptations and behavioral adaptations. And that will transition right into how weather and crazy natural events will affect how humans have engineered our homes and the things around us and adapted to crazy weather in August. So we can't wait to see you. 
in August on the 17th for our week um, of Excel Camp Then. Thank you all so much. We will see you then. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you again for joining us with Animal Adaptations. Hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye, everyone.